Now, it's quite interesting the piece we just completed on platforms and when it becomes more cost effective to hold Vanguard life strategy funds elsewhere outside of the Vanguard investor platform because there are lots of people that have it as a core holding and they will slowly over time be increasing their exposure to that fund. Now one thing to bear in mind is the financial services compensation schemes. So with the FSCS you have to realize that when you invest via an investment platform the protection applies to different things so it can be if the platform goes bust something that they particularly do but I'm focusing on the situation what happens when the fund itself goes wrong so let's say for example I'm going to, I'm talking about Vanguard here so let's say something happened with Vanguard and it went completely uh, to the wall then what would happen to your money now ordinarily under the financial services compensation scheme what would happen you'd be protected up to 85,000 pounds now that protection is per firm and so that is per person too so if you had a pension and you had a whole load of Vanguard funds that let's say it totaled half a million pounds and if Vanguard went bust and there was a situation where you could make a claim under the financial services compensation scheme then you would only be able to claim for a total of eighty five thousand pounds and that would also be true even if all of those funds were whole were held with different platforms so that becomes an issue so as you start to build up your pot and you one day might get beyond the £85,000 threshold, then you are exposing yourself to that potential that if something went wrong, then you won't be covered by the financial services compensation scheme. Now, that is true of any investment platform, and it may be people watching this and listening to this podcast thinking, blimey, Damien, you are a bit of a um, sort of a, a doom monger. But when you have stories like we've had this week with Metro Bank, and we've, I've lived through the period, I remember working in the city when the financial crisis occurred and when we had bank runs, and everybody was suddenly worried about the financial services compensation scheme. They didn't even think about it before that, what protections they have. People need to be aware that they that it exists, but then the problem that occurs when you start to commit all of your money to not just one fund, but it's one fund house. So given that Life Strategy is a very popular fund, and people might be sitting there building up sizable pots with, into that fund. That could be because their employers pay money in, or if they're self-employed, they'd be able to pay lump sums at the end of a year, for example, for tax efficiency. And that pot is building up. Then what can you do about that? Now, it raised the question that are there other funds, alternatives to the Vanguard life strategy that do essentially the same thing? because it is incredibly popular. It is almost cult-like. I will say to people, go and listen to Podcast 378, where I talked about the downside of the Vanguard Life Strategy Funds, and I explained how they work, um, because they didn't perform very well in 2022, and that was a good uh, highlight as to how they work. And so a lot of people learn about what they're actually invested in as a result. But let's say you do like them and you want to invest in an alternative that does the same thing, how do you even find one? Because there are thousands and thousands of funds out there. How do you go about looking for an alternative? And interestingly, I did this for, for 8020 investor members, and I look at something called a correlation coefficient. So the mathematician in me gets excited by <laughs> correlation coefficients. Very simply, it's a statistic that can be calculated. So you take two things, so it could be two funds, and you look at how their price moves over time, and if they move in lockstep, so when one moves up, the other does exactly the same way, then they have a correlation of one. If they move in opposite directions at the same rate, then it's a minus one correlation coefficient, and if they're completely unconnected and they're doing things almost seemingly independent of one another, then it would be zero. And so you can find things that behave the same as something or completely differently and you can use that to diversify portfolios. Now the issue is it's quite difficult to calculate. I mean I have tools that I use that I pay for that enable me to do this but how would somebody who's listening to the podcast who's now sitting there thinking yeah do you know what this is a good point I want to find another fund just like Vanguard that isn't run by Vanguard. So I want another life strategy fund that's the same allocation 
equity, that's what I'm going to use as my example today. I want to find another one. So one way of doing this is to go on to a website like Trustnet and you can go and rank funds in a sector, for example, and you can decide what the table is going to look like. And I went on there and tried to find a, a way of doing a bit of scruffy research that could give me a similar result to what I was finding when I did the 80-20 investor piece. And I built a table, looked at the five-year performance and ranked it by that. So from the best performers to the worst performers. And I therefore went and found the Vanguard Life Strategy Fund. The Vanguard Life Strategy 60% shares fund. So it's the most popular fund in the mixed 40 to 85% share sector. So just because two funds end up having a similar performance over a five-year period doesn't mean that they got there in the same way. It's like you're arriving at the same destination. It doesn't mean you took the same route as somebody else. So it's important, therefore, to try and get a feel for they were doing things in the same way. Now, like I've mentioned, you won't be able to find the correlation coefficients because you have to calculate them. But what you can do is put in the three-year performance and the one-year performance on that table and then look across and see if you can find funds that will be very close to the Vanguard fund that you're looking at because you ranked it by the five-year performance. Look at the ones a few above and a few below to see what the three-year performance figures. Do they match or very close to the Vanguard Life Strategy 60% fund? Then look at the one-year performance. And what you do is you very quickly whittle down your shortlist to get to a couple of choices that you sit there and think, these seemingly had similar performance profiles over one year, three year and five years. Then if you go and chart them, because you can do that on things like Trustnet, but on your investment platform of choice, you can then chart them and see how they perform. Did they move in the same way? And incredibly, you can find funds that basically do exactly the same. Now, I'm going to give you one of them. Is This isn't a recommendation in any way, shape or form. It's just an, a, a a product of some research to show you this is how you can do this stuff. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you before I give you the, the fund name is you will do that on the fund 40 to 85% share sector and you'll come along with some answers. And I suggest before you click go, add in the other sector, which is the 20 to 60% share sector, which is the one that's a little bit more cautious. Because in there, there is a fund that does pretty much the same thing as the Vanguard Life Strategy 60% fund, but it has slightly less than 60% equity, so it's able to go into the lower or more cautious sector, which is obviously you'd have missed that if, you hadn't, if I hadn't have told you. So go and find that sector, put that in your table as well, and then what you'll find is you'll very quickly find a fund, and it's a range of funds that Barclays produce, and it's called the Barclays Wealth Global Markets 3. Now, if you go and chart that, your jaw will hit the floor over five years, for example, because you'll see they pretty much are in lockstep. And when I charted it, the difference in performance is often fractions of a percentage point, or it's within one or two percentage points. Now, the Fund is the Barclays Wealth Global Markets 3 fund, and that actually has a correlation coefficient of 0.98 over a five-year period with that life strategy fund. So that shows you it is almost moving in lockstep. So you end up coming up with a similar result that I did in a much more mathematical way. So they are similar in that they hold lots of underlying trackers, so in the case of the Barclays Fund, their iShares, in the case of Vanguard, they're often Vanguard holdings. But they are slightly different in the things they invest in. So the Vanguard has a bit more exposure to UK equities, whereas the Barclays Fund doesn't. And so there is a slight difference in performance, but it's very marginal. But if you interestingly, if you look over one month, six month, one year, three year and five year time frames, as I make this podcast today, the Barclays Fund actually outperformed the Vanguard fund on all of those time frames. And okay, sometimes we're talking a sort of less than a percentage point, but it just goes to show that there are alternatives out there if you want them that do the same thing. And so you 
can invest in something else and not fall foul of the FSCS limits. Of course, I'm not getting into the fact that you can, if you've got a partner, you can split your investments with them. I'm talking about an individual here. Now, the other thing, when you're doing your research and you're trying to find out alternatives to something like a Vanguard Life Strategy 60% fund or any fund that you really like, it doesn't have to be Vanguard. I'm picking on that one because it's one of the most popular funds out there. So the FSCS protection applies to UK domiciled OEICs, OICs, which are open-ended investment companies and unit trusts. Now, interestingly, they don't necessarily apply to investment trusts or it doesn't apply to necessarily apply to investment trusts or ETFs because if it's not domiciled in the UK, then you get the protection of the jurisdiction where something is domiciled. Now, I tried to confirm the fact that investment trusts weren't covered by the FSCS, with the FSCS, and they are very unhelpful in that regard. What they do is go, say, go and speak to the provider. So always, if you're looking for any investment fund of any kind, do speak with the providers to find out what the protections are. But if you look at a lot of the literature out there, because ETFs are effectively shares and investment trusts are shares in companies, then they operate in a slightly different way and therefore the FSCS protection isn't universal. So what that means is if you're looking for an alternative to something like a unit trust, you need to find another unit trust and make sure it's domiciled in the UK, not Ireland, because it won't be covered. And of course the FSCS doesn't cover individual shares or bonds anyway. So doing a bit of research, Playing around with the performance tables that are out there, you can in fact find alternatives that exist. And in some cases, they are performing slightly better than the thing they seemingly mirror almost. So the message from this part of the podcast, be mindful of those limits that exist with the FSCS, but you can use performance tables if you're shrewd enough. Make sure you look in areas where you're not expecting maybe other sectors And you can find alternatives that probably do almost the same thing as a fund that you particularly like. Now, I, in this piece, have just focused on funds that do the same thing in terms of their mixed assets. I'm not talking about going and creating a a sort of quasi version using other unit trusts that invest in UK equities, North American equities, because in theory, you could probably build your own version of a large strategy fund if you look at the underlying asset allocation of a whole range of unit trusts and OICs. I'm focusing on keeping it simple. Oh, oh, oh.